Hey gang, Mike here. There was a lottery 65 million years ago, and if you happen to have the right stuff, your lineage was spared. Mammals won, with birds coming in second place, reptiles did okay, and amphibians even squeaked by. It's pretty easy to understand most of these lottery results. These guys would eat anything, these guys could efficiently travel long distances to find food, and these hefty fellows were too big so there wasn't enough food left for them to go around, so they were doomed from the beginning. That all makes sense. But why didn't any small dinosaurs survive, especially when small mammals and reptiles did? What acts did these tiny terrible lizards commit that were so unspeakable the gods decided to completely wipe their kind from existence forever? You might think the answer's simple. Mammals and reptiles were burrowers and could hide underground to escape the hell above. But nay. In 2007, scientists found Erictodromius cubicularis, the first evidence of dinosaurs choosing life underground, and have found several more since. So we can't use the excuse that only small mammals and reptiles were burrowers who could escape the apocalypse happening above. There's actually a few reasons small dinos couldn't make it, which all add up to equal imminent death for them. And the first one comes from dinosaurs being at least partially endothermic or warm-blooded. This means that even when they were just sitting on their butts watching Rick and Morty, they were burning a lot of energy, making them need to eat often. Being cold-blooded helps small reptiles survive. This exothermicness means they regulate their bodies using the environment, which means their metabolism is slower, which means they don't have to eat as often. Hence why you only feed your snake once a week while you're gorging on food all day every day, you endothermic beast. Reason number two is due to their differences with birds. Birds survived because they developed some very unique traits that no other dinosaurs had, besides of course flying. That awesome trait alone wasn't enough to save them, just ask the pterosaurs. Some birds had evolved beaks by this point to replace their toothy jaws. Beaks weren't only lighter and more efficient for flying, but helped them have varied diets and be able to eat things like nuts which would have had a long shelf life and been relatively plentiful after the impact. Not a single toothed bird survived. And while we're on the subject, pterosaurs died because they were too big, needed to eat too much, and couldn't survive on small bugs and seeds. The smallest pterosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous had wingspans of about 6 feet, which was the size of the biggest birds at the time. And FYI, birds did end up evolving to pretty massive sizes such as Pelagornis, who had a wingspan of 24 feet. The largest wingspan of any living bird is the albatross at 12 feet. Okay, on to the final and biggest answer to this here mystery, which comes from the seemingly small differences between dinosaurs and reptiles as skeletons. Dinos had stronger bites and different hip sockets. Big whoop. What this tells us is that dinosaurs could support more weight because of their bone structure, which means they were designed to be bigger than reptiles, or mammals for that matter. The birds, aka avian dinosaurs, had adaptations which allowed them to completely fill the teacup dinosaur niche. Sadly, this would have never been a thing. For a long time, the smallest terrestrial dinosaur we knew of was Parvocursor, who was already kind of big at 15 inches long, but then we discovered he was actually a juvenile, meaning he wasn't even fully grown. There weren't any terrestrial dinosaurs smaller than a turkey, which are of course too big to not be terrifying. In contrast, the smallest flying dinosaur was Ocula dentavis. In 2016, his skull was found in amber and was less than an inch long and weighed one tenth of an ounce. One sunflower seed or ant probably filled this guy up for a week. Without adaptations like the birds had, a normal dinosaur couldn't compete at real small sizes with mammals and reptiles. Since even most mammal and reptile species all died out, we can see that if you didn't have a very specific set of traits, you were a goner. So compared to all the surviving species, land-dwelling dinosaurs were relatively big, had to eat too often, and had specialized diets. Basically, land-dwelling dinos were the panda bears of the Cretaceous. 